The goal of this lecture is to help you understand how thermodynamics can be an important control on microbial activity in geological environments. We're going to uh, focus our discussion on understanding this thermodynamic potential factor, uh, which has its roots in the kinetic modeling world and can help us illustrate some of the basic concepts, some of the basic relationships through which thermodynamics affects microbial activity. Okay, so the, the question that we're, uh, that we're after here is how does thermodynamics affect microbial activity? Well, at its most basic level, it's clear that a reaction has to release energy in order to drive ATP synthesis. In other words, the reaction has to have a negative delta G. Otherwise, a chemotroph can't really use it. Beyond that, it seems that the extent to which uh, the reaction is thermodynamically favorable can be an important control on the rate at which that reaction can occur. And that's mostly what we're going to be talking about here. This first part, right, is pretty easy uh, to understand. This last part is a little more complicated. And so this is where it's helpful to go into that um, uh, kinetic model to help understand this relationship. Okay, so here's the, the kinetic model that I introduced to you in the earlier lecture. And again, the first part of this is the dual monod equation, uh, which accounts for uh, the effect of the number of cells on the rate of the reaction, as well as kinetic factors related to electron donation and electron acceptance. And then this last part is the part that Xu Shenzhen and Craig Betke added, uh, the thermodynamic potential factor, which accounts for the thermodynamic drive of the reaction. Okay, um, to put that another way, basically you could say that it is a quantitative link between thermodynamics and microbial reaction rates. And so when you expand that term, uh, this is what you get. Uh, you see that uh, delta G of the reaction shows up there. Okay, that's just the energy yield of the net metabolic reaction. Uh, we have this M, uh, which is the number of ATPs generated per reaction turnover. Delta G sub P is the free energy change of ADP phosphorylation. Chi is uh, the number of times that the rate limiting step occurs. Okay, and then of course we have the ideal gas constant and temperature there in degrees in, in Kelvin. All right, so let's look into this a little bit further. Collectively. Uh, these two terms uh, basically represent the amount of energy captured by a cell's metabolism. Okay. It's the number of ATPs generated uh, times the amount of energy necessary to do that. And then uh, this other uh, term is the amount of energy released by a metabolic reaction, which you should be familiar with, delta G of the reaction. Basically, environments affect microbial activity by uh, the rate of, my, of microbial metabolism by affecting this term right here, right? This is the thing where uh, that can change as a result of changes in chemistry in the environment. Uh, with the exception, of course, of temperature, all these other things are either constants or uh, simply a function of the cell itself. Okay, so it's mostly through this delta G of the reaction that the environment influences the rate of a microbial reaction. So what if the energy released greatly exceeds the amount needed to make ATP? Okay. In that case, uh, this exponential term approaches a value of zero, if you carry that through. And uh, as a result, the thermodynamic potential factor approaches a value of one. If that's the case, the rate is essentially not affected by thermodynamic controls. The rate that you get when you calculate, uh, when you uh, multiply all these other factors together, does not change when you multiply it by one, right? So that means that all these other factors are what determines the rate of the reaction, not the thermodynamic potential factor. On the other hand, what if the energy released by a reaction decreases and approaches that necessary to make ATP? In this case, the numerator for this exponential term 
decreases and it approaches a value of zero. Where that happens, this exponential term uh, approaches a value of one, and as a result, the thermodynamic potential factor decreases. Where that happens, the rate of the reaction would then also decrease. Okay, so whatever you get when you multiply these monad function or uh, monad factors together, uh, when you multiply, when you take into account the thermodynamic controls, the rate that you calculate there would have to decrease. So let me illustrate this for you. I'm going to switch to a drawing pad, try to make this a little clearer. Let's imagine uh, that we have some sulfate reducers, okay? And uh, sulfate reducing microbes uh, tend to have uh, an M value uh, around 1 and chi value of about 6, okay? And this is based on Bethke, 2011 American Journal of Science paper, which is referenced in the homework. All right, so well, let me just write over here for our reference the numerator uh, in uh, that exponential term. Whoops, that's not what I want to do. It's plus. Uh, dang it. Let me try that again. There we go. M delta G sub P. There we go. All right, so let's imagine a situation in which the reaction has a free energy change of negative 50 kilojoules per mole. If that's the case, then the numerator in that exponential term would then equal negative 50 plus 1 times 45, right? 45 kilojoules per mole for ATP phosphorylation, or sorry, ADP phosphorylation. And in that case, the numerator equals 5 kilojoules per mole. Okay, if that's the case, and we carry the calculation through and determine our thermodynamic potential factor, we would get a value equal to 0 0.29. Okay, so then if we apply that to the rate law that I showed you, now let me just write this out for you. Times electron donation, electron acceptance, thermodynamic potential factor. This means that whatever value you get, okay, when you calculate the rate based on these uh, variables, or I should say terms, whatever value you get there, you then have to multiply by 0.29. Okay, so whatever value you get here is going to be decreased when you take into account the thermodynamic controls on the reaction rate. All right, let's, let's uh, imagine a, a, a different situation, a situation in which uh, sulfate reduction is more energetically favorable. Let's say the reaction yield is 80 kilojoules per mole. All right, so in this case, calculate our numerator. We get 1 times 45 the value becomes negative 35 kilojoules per mole. And carry that through, determine our thermodynamic potential factor, we end up with a value of 0.91. Okay, so that means that uh, in this case, uh, this is very close to 1, so it really doesn't have a huge impact on uh, the rate that you get when you take into consideration all these other factors. So under these conditions, uh, the rate of the microbial reaction is affected relatively little by thermodynamic controls. Okay, so let's go back to the slides and just finish up. <clears throat> so where is this important? Well, it's more likely to be important uh, as a control on the microbial reaction rates in anoxic environments. <clears throat> Iron, I'm sorry, oxygen respiration and <clears throat> as well as nitrate reduction, for, uh, for that matter, are extremely favorable reactions. Uh, you don't need a whole lot of oxygen around. You don't need a whole lot of nitrate around in order for those reactions to be very favorable, much more favorable than is needed by the cell to phosphorylate ADP. 
As a result of that, uh, thermodynamic controls often are not important in controlling the rate of those reactions. On the other hand, when it comes to iron reduction, sulfate reduction, methanogenesis, some of the other metabolisms that can exist in anoxic environments, thermodynamic controls are often important. And that's because those reactions aren't as energetically favorable. Okay, so it's less likely, at least compared to aerobic respiration, it's less likely that they're going to have energy yields that greatly exceed the energy demands of ADP phosphorylation. Okay, and then remember, this is uh, what we're talking about here is thermodynamics as a control on microbial reaction rates. At the end of the day, <clears throat> the, um, the most basic control, however, is just simply that the reaction be energetically favorable. If a reaction is not energetically favorable, of course, it's not going to be able to be used to help drive ADP phosphorylation. And therefore, it cannot be useful uh, to a chemotroph uh, for their catabolism. Okay, so this is um, these are the basic uh, relationships that I need you to understand. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know. Good luck with the homework, and I'll see you after spring break.